So that was an interesting morning faffing around with some wires to try and get that to work. <laughs> in the fire engine again today uh, the um, Juntec battery monitor that I fitted uh, I followed all the instructions in the user manual um, but it does appear that I've uh, I might have actually connected it up incorrectly uh, despite uh, trying to follow the manual um, it does seem that you can actually connect the shunt in the wrong uh, orientation so uh, I'm gonna have a look at that now and see if I can make that work the Juntec manual does suggest that there is one way to connect uh, things together to measure charge and another way to connect things together to measure discharge. Um, but when I tested it on the bench, the unit was able to switch between charge and discharge depending on whether I actually applied some power to it or drew some power from it. So um, I'm just going to strip out the battery box and have a look at the shunt and make sure that I've got it connected how I think it should be connected and then do some more tests. So this is where the batteries live. I've got two 100 amp hour AGM batteries in there connected together as a 12 volt battery. This socket on the front here is uh, simply a 12 volt socket for some outside lights. The Juntec display is connected up here. If I press the OK button it shows that it's got a constant discharge of 95 watt hours over the period which is about a week. Um, but that's just discharge but I suspect the reason it records no amp hours is because I've got the shunt in the wrong way around so let's have a look The shunt lives down there somewhere there it is there's the shunt these are the cables that connect up to the battery they're quite small cables but this is a relatively low power system probably only about 10 to 12 amps and this is more than adequate for that so I'm going to take this uh, AGM battery out and uh, then probably take the shunt out and see see what's what there so there's the battery I think that one is uh, about well they're both about uh, 18 months old there's the shunt and the f incoming fuse. Uh, I'm just going to take that shunt right out now because uh, you have to actually take the bottom of the shunt or the shunt apart in order to actually access the, the bolts for the terminals because they're not secured onto the circuit board. So I'll show you that when I get there. So this is the shunt and this is the way I had it connected. I had this side connected to the negative and this side connected to the um, charge in and load out. So I need to dismantle this, take these apart and reconnect them the other way around so I can use the same cables. Now that bolt is free which means it can't be tightened very securely without disassembling the rest of the shunt. There you go, back together. Right, let's go and fit it in. So here's the shunt back in the battery box. This one goes to the 
battery uh, negative terminal and this black one here is from the charge uh, system coming in so if I connect it that way we'll see what happens so we've got the shunt connected now and uh, it's connected up uh, correctly here and the wires come back through here we've got the controller and display running on USB at the moment and uh, I can actually see that it's actually charging now it says uh, 0.3 amps uh, which is fine because it's not exactly the sunniest of days and the sun's not really on the panel but this is actually showing charge rather than discharge so uh, just wait and see if the amp hours ever count up but given that it's only 0.2 amps it's going to take a long time for an amp hour to arrive got a bit more sun now and it says 0.3 of an amp coming in from the battery uh, the uh, accumulated watt hours uh, 410 uh, it's been on there about five minutes now it's a single solar panel but only about 0.3 amps today uh, in the winter it's not exactly a, a sunny day so I'm going to start up the motor now and uh, see what the charger says and hopefully I've got it the right way around this time bad for a cold start it's not been started for a week with a bit of fiddling around managed to get this to show that it is actually charging it's charging seven amps from the mains hookup um, at the moment which is a 10 amp battery charger um, it's been on for about probably now well it says three minutes at the bottom but I've reset it so it's been on two or three hours so now I've turned off the mains hookup and just turned on the fridge. You see the fridge is drawing 3.7 amps, um, which is great. That's all fine. It's actually telling me what's going on. So yeah, very happy with that. Obviously it can't measure discharge and charge simultaneously, but uh, yeah, perhaps that's not important. We've just been out for a little drive around and it seems to be that it's uh, reporting that it's charging the battery using the split charge DC to DC charger so I think um, wiring's all good. So that was an interesting morning faffing around with some wires to try and get that to work. In the end I think I've got it where it shows charge going in if obviously the cumulative charge is larger than the discharge and the discharge um, when there's no solar it's clear to see from the meter so yeah the right way around limited little meter but actually quite informative if you like the video please subscribe hope you enjoyed it see you on the next one bye